Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is 1986's Transformers Generation 1 Ultra Magnus. Now, Ultra Magnus first hit the toy shelves in 1986 to coincide with his appearance in The Transformers The Movie. But before he was seen in Transformers the movie, he appeared in a kick-ass commercial. Ultra Magnus! The courageous Ultra Magnus is a born leader. We meet at last, Galvatron. And it will be the last time we meet. And Galvatron is Ultra Magnus' sworn enemy! Transformers! Now I think that commercial is kind of a bait and switch because you hear Optimus Prime talk about the born leader that Ultra Magnus is along with Megatron talking about how powerful Galvatron is. And then when the movie happened, we found out the true story regarding these characters. Now, Ultra Magnus, of course, everyone knows from Transformers the movie, was what we thought was going to be the new leader of the Autobots when Optimus Prime gave him the Matrix. Now, of course, Ultra Magnus lost the Matrix near the end of the movie when he was destroyed by Galvatron's sweeps. Magnus! I want the Matrix. Never! We exterminate him! Die! Die! Ultra Magnus was then repaired by the Junkions and pretty much took a back seat for the rest of the movie. He appeared in multiple episodes throughout Season 3 even having a few knockdown drag out fights with Cyclonus. In Marvel Comics, Ultra Magnus made his first appearance in the Transformers the Movie comic adaptation. And that, for me, was how I experienced Transformers the movie because it never opened in a theater in my area. And one of the things I noticed when I read the comic compared to when I saw the movie was the comic shows the original death, death of Ultra Magnus where he is drawn and quartered. Now, the comics get the original screenplay and that's how they're able to put out the ad adaptation right before the movie comes out. So in the original story, Ultra Magnus was supposed to be drawn and quartered, but they thought that was a little too violent in the ultra-violent Transformers the movie, so they changed it. But if you compare the deleted scene storyboards of Ultra Magnus' original death with the audio from the movie, it matches up perfectly, as you'll see in this video from The Space Bridge. I want the Matrix. Never! We exterminate him! And that was pretty much it for Ultra Magnus in Marvel Comics. He never appeared in the ongoing series, but did appear frequently in the UK series, where it was always him versus Galvatron. So enough with the history of Ultra Magnus. Let's take a look at this fantastic Generation 1 toy. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> In 
vehicle mode, Ultra Magnus transforms into a very patriotic looking armored car carrier. And this is a large G1 vehicle. Ultra Magnus here is almost the exact same size as G1 Optimus Prime. If you take Ultra Magnus here and compare him to Optimus Prime's trailer, the car carrier section is the exact same size. Now, of course, the cab section of Ultra Magnus is a repaint of G1 Optimus Prime. That's the exact same, but because the trailer hitch for Prime's trailer sets closer to the front of the trailer, Optimus Prime is just a little bit longer in full combined mode. Now, G1 Ultra Magnus pulls off being a car carrier a lot better than some of his new modern incarnations. For example, you can take a G1 Hot Rod, you can place him up top. There's actually little indentations up here that holds the wheels in place. You have Hot Rod here. You can't really put another Deluxe on the back because he's going to fall off, but there is room to put, say, mini bots. And here on the back side, there's actually these flaps that come down so vehicles can drive up inside Ultra Magnus so Ultra Magnus can carry them on as well. Now, Hot Rod won't fit because he is a little wide, but the mini bots fit perfectly. And yet you can still slide Hot Rod in if you'd like. So he can store in the bottom like so, you just can't drive him up the ramp. Now my Ultra Magnus right here is an original 1986 version. So he comes with rubber tires, both for the cab section and the car carrier. Now in later releases, which may have been 1987, Hasbro got a little cheap and the tires were plastic. And also here on the cab, they replaced the windows that he has with nothing. And for the longest time, I thought my windows had aged and they had this yellow tint to them. But according to online, that is correct. Ultra Magnus had yellow tinted windows. That's really cool. I never really paid that much attention to that when I was a kid. But as I said, in latter releases, they removed the windows and replaced the tires with plastic, which kind of sucked. So let's put Ultra Magnus back together here. Now, as you can see, he comes apart pretty easy from the trailer hitch, but once you get him attached, he rolls really good. Those rubber tires are awesome, and I love it. I love the fact we had rubber tires back in the G1 days. Now, up here on top, he does have missile launchers, but due to safety features, there's no launching to these missiles. You pull the button, and you can take the missile out, but that's about it. There is a spring inside, but man, it's just... It is weak. I mean, you can see maybe, but yeah, there's a spring in there that pretty much just allows the missile to click in place. So that sucks. Now I know on the reissue Ultra Magnus, the missiles I believe can fire, but they've been elongated. These little missiles right here are about that long. This section here is almost two inches long, which would really make that look a little odd. Now let's take a closer look at the car carrier itself. Lots of great molded details. I love the red, white, and blue color scheme. Now the decals for the car carrier are Toy Hacks decals. And there's an extra bonus decal right there that I'll go over later that I don't believe Toy Hacks even makes anymore. So really like the looks of this. Now a feature that I really couldn't do because I didn't have the space in my review area is you can actually flip these little sections here back like so and you can lower the top section right here so you can make it look like the vehicles are actually driving up a ramp and then Ultra Magnus can raise this back up and lock them into place and of course you got these little things here you flip out that keeps that from falling down it doesn't keep the missile launchers from popping off but <laughs> oh well and that's pretty much it for the car carrier mode. I love the details there on the rims. Looks really, really good. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and take a look at the cab. Now, my cab is a little rough. I'm going to have to get a Molotov chrome pin and fix up the bumper and some of the other chrome decals or details, excuse me. And yeah, I mean, it's got, I have no idea why I got sticker decals for the carrier 
but no decals for the cab. These are original decals right here. You can see those are a little rough, but this cab right here is the exact same mold as G1 Optimus Prime. Of course, this G1 is a reissue. You can tell by the shortened smokestacks, but I have an original Prime I'll show off with robot mode. And of course, you can see the plastic translucent windows right there. Really, really cool. Now, when I was a kid and I had this Ultra Magnus, I used this version as the protected Optimus Prime. He was sprayed with that protectant from the hate plague, which turned him white. So I used this Ultra Magnus as my hate plague proof Optimus Prime. So as I said earlier, also rubber tires right there. Now those that rubber feels a little hard. So I may not mess with that too much. That's the one big issue with having these old vehicles or old transformers with rubber. Sometimes they tend to crack, but I don't see that problem with mine. So now let's go ahead and get Ultra Magnus, almost got him, called him Optimus Prime. Let's get Ultra Magnus transformed into robot mode, exactly the same as Optimus Prime. Flip the legs down, flip the feet up, swing out the arms, flip that head up, and there you have Ultra Magnus in robot mode. And of course, like G1 Optimus Prime, you have to plug in the fists. There is a little bit of parts for me. Now, I am not sure if these fists are my original or not. See how this section here sticks up? I don't know if these are latter year Ultra Magnus fists or reissue fists. So maybe you guys who are better G1 toy gurus than me can hit me up in the comment and let me know, comment section, and let me know. But there we go. There is Ultra Magnus in robot mode, and he looks exactly like G1 Optimus Prime, except for the color scheme. Now, as I said earlier, with the latter releases of Ultra Magnus, Hasbro got cheap. And one of the cheap things they did for this version, they omitted the paint right there on the head. There was no blue or red. It was a plain white head on Ultra Magnus, which actually looked terrible. So now let's go ahead and give Ultra Magnus here his weapon. He does have this really cool looking gun and you have to flip it. See how it's got two handles. You have to flip it on this side. So this version, as I'm going to call the unarmored Ultra Magnus, can wield it. So there you go. So now let's compare Generation 1 Ultra Magnus with Generation 1 Optimus Prime. And as you can see, they actually look really good together. You can tell that they're nothing more than a straight up repaint. Now I am noticing that there's some horrible knees on my Ultra Magnus. This guy definitely needs cleaned up and have some stickers add to him. That may be a future Toy Hacks video of mine. Now articulation for Ultra Magnus is the exact same as G1 Optimus Prime. No articulation whatsoever in the head, unless you wanted to have him look up and that's due to transformation. The arms can do a complete 360 and his hand will fall right out. There's also an elbow bend and an elbow rotation. Let me get that hand back in. No waist articulation. Now the legs can move back and that's it. Also due to transformation. And he also has a knee bend. So he can, <laughs> he can do that. And since the fists do plug in separately, I guess there's wrist rotation. Now, another thing you can do with Ultra Magnus is he can actually wield the missile launchers in his hands like handheld weapons. There's little pegs on the side. Just peg that one in right there. And let's see, we'll get this one here on the other side. So there we go. So you got a unique look for your Ultra Magnus, but these are a little heavy and I do not know why that hand does not want to stay in. So let's go ahead and give Ultra Magnus his weapon back. Now with those fists being as loose as they are plugging into the figure, I'm really starting to wonder if those are the right ones to go with Ultra Magnus. So now let's get Ultra Magnus transformed into the mode we all know and love, his super robot mode. Now to transform Ultra Magnus into his super robot mode, not only are you going to utilize the car carrier, 
but there are extra accessories you'll also need. This chest piece, this super robot head, and two extra fists. So there is gonna be more parts for me. Now I do wanna show you something cool with this little chest piece right here. Like I said, it's a chest piece, but if you look at it at this angle, it looks like a little ship. Now this carries over from the Diaclone line that the Transformers originated from in uh, Japan. And there were Diaclone pilots that drove these vehicles. And you could utilize this chest piece as like a little sky sled and the pilot would sit right there. See how that actually looks like a seat? So that's pretty cool. That's something I didn't know about until probably just a couple years ago. And you can actually take Ultra Magnus's super robot head and plug it right there on the top. So you have this armored drone or sky sled thing. And I think that's really neat. And you can even store this in Ultra Magnus in car carrier mode if you don't want to utilize it for carrying vehicles. So it'll snap right in place there. You can plug in the head. So there you go. That is an option. Actually, that looks like a little battle platform. So you can probably reverse that and use your Hate Plague Optimus Prime along with this as a weapon mount. So another option you can do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out. That's actually where it's going to plug later on. And we're going to transform the car carrier. And the first thing we want to do is move this section up. And these actually peg in. You have to pull these apart. They peg in down here on the back and they're on the front. So peg those or unpeg those and swing those around. And there's a little tab right here. See the little clips? That is going to clip into place. So you've got that going on. Now on Ultra Magnus's back, this is the trailer hitch. Go ahead and pop this off. It's on there a little tight. It pegs in right there. You see these little pegs? That coincide with those holes right there. So we've got the all this going on. I am going to have to zoom out. So now from this point, what you're going to do is fold these sections down that held the top half of the car carrier up and just flip these up. And these will actually lock into place as well. You got the little tab right there. Ooh, there's a stress mark right there. I hate seeing stress marks on my G1s, but you want to go ahead and get that tab right through that section right there. Ah, that was scary. So now these are tabbed into place. Go ahead and the arms are swinging all over the place. Rotate the arms forward and you're going to take this long section right here and push that up. Do that on both sides. Now, when I did this earlier testing to see if my Ultra Magnus still transformed okay, those were so tight and they actually snapped back and cut my thumb. So if you're seeing, or not my thumb, right here, they cut right there. So that's where that came from. Ultra Magnus did that to me. So rotate the arms around. You've got that section up. Now you're going to take the arm here and bend forward. So you've got that going on. And there is Ultra Magnus's armor. Put that to the side. So now what you need to do is take your unarmored Ultra Magnus. Go ahead and remove the fists and the weapon. And you're going to half transform him. All you're going to do... Well, first thing I'm going to do is I put the fists inside his chest. That way I do not lose them. Shut those up and take the back section. And you're just going to fold the arms in like you're transforming him back to truck mode. But that's it. You're just going to have him looking like this. Now you're going to take the armor section. Go ahead and fold Magnus's toes down. And you're going to plug this unarmored Magnus into this section here. The tabs or the pegs where the hitch went are going to line up with the holes right there where his fists went. And also, right here, you've got these little pieces sticking out from the wheels. Those are going to line up with those slots right there. So we'll go ahead and get him lined up and plugged in. And he actually plugs in pretty tight. So now we've got that going on. 
Now we're going to take the giant robot head, just slide that over the unarmored version, and then you have these larger fists. There is a right and left, so make sure and plug those into the right sections or the right pegs. You're going to take the missile launchers from earlier, make sure the launcher button and you're going to take the missile launchers from earlier, make sure the launch button is on the top and those are going to peg in right there on his shoulders. Nice tight fit as well. Take the chest piece and that's going to plug in right here at the top, snaps right into place. You've got the trailer hitch. It now becomes Ultra Magnus's belt. You've got these little pegs right there. Just line those up. Got those on. And now you're going to take the rifle from earlier and you're going to flip it. So now you have this oval handle opposed to the round handle. And just plug that into Ultra Magnus's hand. And there we have Ultra Magnus in super robot mode. Now, Ultra Magnus's Super Robot Mode is the mode that we're all familiar with from the movie, the cartoon show, and the comics. And it looks really, really good. All of the details from the car carrier carry over to Robot Mode, along with that fantastic color scheme. Great decals. Like I said, I don't know why I decaled the carrier, but not the inner robot. But as you can see, the inner robot doesn't show at all other than the windows. Now, right here, this decal is one that was not included on the original figure. The original Ultra Magnus, this entire section was red. This was a bonus Toy Hacks decal that came with a variety set that they used to sell back when they were repro labels. And it was just one large white decal, as you can see, that makes it look like Ultra Magnus has legs. And I really like the looks of that. Now, this figure here is nothing but a brick. I mean, there's hardly any articulation. The arms can rotate a complete 360. Mine are really, really tight, so I don't want to fool with that. And there is an elbow bend, and that's it. Other than that, he is just rolling around, and he actually has a wheel right there. So you got the wheels from carrier mode and this little fifth wheel right there so ultra magnus can just roll around and defend autobot city so a fantastic figure an iconic figure and one i am so happy to have in my collection now you want to talk about cheap one of the worst things that hasbro did when they cheapened ultra magnus you know they left off paint applications and the plastic tires is the robot head right here. See how that's nice and silver, along with the silver antennas? When Hasbro went the cheap route, they left that unpainted. And when I was getting parts for this figure, as I said, this was my original G1, but I lost some of the parts, so I had to get those, which explains the weird fists I have for the inner robot. When I found an Ultra Magnus head, I discovered there was an unpainted one. And I was like, I do not remember that from mine but after some research that's when i found out about the cheapness of hasbro and i found a proper head with the painted antenna and face so if you're wanting to complete your ultra magnus make sure and be aware of those cheap hasbro uh unpainted versions so there you go guys ultra magnus in super robot mode and now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1986's Generation 1 Ultra Magnus with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Hot Rod, and Kingdom Ultra Magnus. 1986's Generation 1 Ultra Magnus is a fantastic toy with tons of playability, though he really doesn't have a lot of mobility. Ultra Magnus here is an iconic toy from the Transformers toy line and an iconic character from the Transformers mythos. And I highly recommend this guy, whether you're a G1 collector or a collector of the modern line. This guy is big, he's colorful, and is going to look great on your shelf. So there you go, guys. 1986's Generation 1 Ultra Magnus.
So, does the 1986 Transformers Generation 1 Ultra Magnus belong in your collection? Absolutely. As I said, this is an iconic Transformers toy and character. Dare I say it, he's almost as popular as Optimus Prime. This is a beautiful looking figure and is going to look awesome back there on your display. Mine's actually dead center when I'm not filming him. So yeah, if you see an Ultra Magnus, pick him up. You are not going to be disappointed. But keep in mind, there are a lot of pieces and parts that go with this guy. You've got four different fists. You've got the two missile launchers, the two missiles, the gun, the big robot head, the trailer. And there's, there's a lot to be on the lookout for. And also be aware of all the different types of Ultra Magnuses there are. You have the original with the rubber tires and the painted face. You have the next one that came out, which was the cheapo plastic unpainted version. And then you had the commemorative version that came out uh, at Toys R Us a few years ago. So they're all decent, but I definitely go with a painted version. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I also have a Patreon page. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. hoo -ah! I went a whole Ultra Magnus video without saying, open, damn it, open.